Joyce Raskin. I play bass and sing for Scarce Reindeer, Speedy Consuela, author of a couple books. Uh, first punk show was, I think, Scream, Ignition, and, oh God, who else opened up? It was at the Wilson Center. I was 14. It was really cool because it was on Sunday afternoon shows. I could walk from my house in D.C., and they had it in a church. It was $5, and you could see, like, 10 bands, and all the money went to, like, good stuff because it was all sponsored by Positive Force D.C., Favorite skate team of all time, I have to say Z-Boys. Because they had Peggy Oki. And they were super cool at the 70s. I loved the sidewalk surfing. That totally got me into skateboarding and rock and roll and punk and everything. I love, love, love them. <sighs> Easy. Well, not easy. The Descendants. Just missed them and all the skaters that I used to hang out with. All had seen them right before I started hanging out with them. They were just a little older than me. But we used to skateboard to the Descendants all the time. All the silly girl. <laughs> Peggy Oki. When she's like sidewalk surfing. She's got her hair like long hair. She's got a flannel shirt on. And it's like right at the angle where she's just kind of hanging off the thing. Super rad and awesome. And there's like a couple shots of her like that in that whole like sequence. But it's one of her that she's just like, you can't even see her face. But she's all hair and super 70s. And like, she's just super badass. I love her. That's really hard. I would say the clash. Best songs ever. And they rocked. And they were like, during that time, it was so different. And everybody who wants to sound punk rock or rock and roll, try to write songs and play as hard as them, but no one rocked out as hard as them. as a four piece and every single guy in the band was like awesome. There is a whole new thing called Skate Like a Girl out in Seattle that when I did a book tour, I met the woman who ran it and it's super cool. And there's all these girls from like eight to as old as they want. They do sk skating, it's awesome. And they teach them how to skate on a ramp and all this stuff. And there's this girl that they turned me on to called Lizzie Amaranto. Who is so cute and so cool. I think she started when she was like 14. And she's got like green hair and she's super punk and cool. But she's like, and she's got a blog. And like what I like about it is she's definitely seems like herself and like all these little girls who are like eight years old are like we want to be just like her when we grow up and I'm like times have changed it's pretty cool god these are hard questions best punk singer best punk singer Milo from the Descendants just because I had such a crush on him oh my god you know because it went hand in hand with me for skateboarding because we'd be listening to them and it's like punk but pop and like good music uh, I don't know his, his voice is awesome Tony Hawk's got the hawk on it and that's it like really simple very cool graphic. It wasn't over designed. I was never into skulls and all that stuff. Like that, that always like I like the misfits. Like and that kind of graphic stuff, I appreciated it. But I didn't like it on the boards. Like I like the simple, just like color in one image. Fugazi, hands down, Fugazi. First show they ever played.
they handed out the song lyrics to all their songs, and I had been a fan of Minor Threat, totally worshipped Dean Mackay like everybody else did. Um, and it was like a super small club. I think I was like 14 or 15 years old. Fugazi came on, and they were so incredible. But it was just the most intense thing I had ever seen, witnessed, anything. And they continued to be like that. But that show was the first time I had ever witnessed anything like that. Like, even though I had seen some of the other punk shows, you were like, I was super close to them, which made a difference. And they were just amazing. Like, he and my guy, all four of them. And you were, like, just super into it. Like, the whole room was into it. It was dead, just awesome and it wasn't crazy like people weren't pogoing around everybody's just like listening i love all the girl power going on i love that girls are being raised that they can do anything um and that they rock they skate they surf and nobody's telling them not to do these things and that there's so many more of them because i feel like when i started there weren't that many and now it's so cool that um, there's like a safe zone for girls to be feel empowered and not need a boyfriend. They can do something that makes them feel good, like skate or surf or play music. And I love that. So I think girl power all the way is the best message and keep it going. Coolest motherfucker ever right now, Courtney Barnett. Hands down, one of the best female guitar players today, female songwriters. She plays left-handed guitar. I saw her play. She's in a three-piece band. Totally awesome, and she's just becoming massively huge. Okay, so we played the Reading Festival. We were staying in the hotel where all the like rock and rollers stayed and there was a fire alarm that went off and it was like one of the first nights of the festival or something like that and so like everybody had to leave the building and there were all these like you know you could spot like rock stars whatever you're like oh there's so and so whatever like all these people from the flaming lips different whatever and we had made friends with the flaming lips because we had played with them in london like the night before so we were hanging out with them and they gave free drinks in the bar to all the people like who were at the festival because they're like sorry for the inconvenience you know because everybody was in the middle of the night and so we're hanging out in the bar and um with the flaming lips and these two guys just kind of walk up to us and like one of them sits down on one side of me and one of them sits down on the other side of me and the guy comes like right up in my face and he just starts like spitting at me and like just and he was like blonde hair and kind of like gnarly looking English teeth and and so we're like what's your problem dude what's wrong with you and the guys from the Flaming Lips were like dude get off twice like what's your problem you know and he's just like ah you and he's pointing at me and we were just like trying to guess all right what band are you in what band are you in and then we're like at that point it was Radiohead we figured it was Radiohead. We were just kind of guessing. We're like, oh, you're Tom, you're from Radiohead. And they weren't that big yet in America. They were big in the UK. And he's like, no. And then he's like, yeah, whatever. But then he literally like fell on top of me. And I was like, the guys, Stephen from the Flaming Lips, this big burly guy's like pulling him off of me, saying like, go away. We don't like you. We don't want you to hang out with us. Like, just go away. We kept looking at we figured it was Johnny from uh, Radiohead who was sitting there and he was just like, just like this the whole time. And we're like, what's wrong with your friend? And he's like, you know, like this. So he didn't say a word. And finally they were so, he was so annoying. Tom York was so annoying that we got up and left because he wouldn't leave me alone. And we have no idea. And then we were like, oh, maybe it's not him. And the next couple of days we're reading in the, like the six page six column and it says, Tom York from Radiohead is chatting Joyce up from Joyce Raskin up from Scares, and I'm like, oh shit! I had never. I wish I had saved that. I didn't. <laughs> okay, on tour, 
in the 90s with Hole in Amsterdam and um, we had gone we had been on tour with them for a while and Courtney ended up not finishing the show she started because people were throwing like ice at her and stuff like that like from the stage and this was like about a year after Kurt died and so she got really mad and climbed up two flights on in these high heels like all the way up in this beautiful theater the Paradiso right in the center of Amsterdam and started beating the crap out of this girl random girl like she didn't know who it was and then the guys were like trying to get her down or whatever and then she's like screw you fuck you Amsterdam Kurt hated Amsterdam I hate Amsterdam and he was, she was like fuck you and we're leaving and they never finished the show and we played like an awesome show it's just us and them and so we like were walking outside me and chick and all of these kids like mobbed us they were like oh my god scarce is the best you're the best you guys are awesome because we actually played the show and then after the show we we're going backstage and drew barrymore is in our dressing room because she's dating eric from hole at the time who's a good friend of ours and so she's like, we're going to go out and have a good time in Amsterdam with her. So I was like, okay, we're hanging out with Drew Barrymore. This is pretty cool. And she was like, oh my God, you guys were so awesome. And I'm like, okay, I'm sitting here with Drew Barrymore and she's telling me my band rocks. That was pretty crazy. And we had some friends of ours from Providence who had bikes who lived in Amsterdam. I'm trying to remember who it was. Stephen Twining, some other people. And uh, they had a bike and we were walking to this club and Drew got behind our friend Steven and she was like holding him like this and we're all like looking back and he's like, oh my God, oh my God, I've got this Drew Barrymore around me and she's going, we love Amsterdam and she's just yelling and screaming and whatever and like, then we go to this bar, we all meet up at this bar, sorry, this is a little long, and there's a fight breaks out like right in front of us this guy's like smashing a bottle over this other guy's head and we're all like "Ooh, maybe we shouldn't go in and drew just steps over the guy like goes <laughs> off the door and she's like come on guys we're going in we're gonna get drunk and wasted and we stayed up till five o'clock in the morning and hung out ran around amsterdam and she was flashing everybody and and then we passed out at like i don't know six seven in the morning it was pretty awesome